Very good. Okay. Once again, this is Jeff Locklear, and this is a webinar uh, on Easy Sports software. So we'll go ahead and get started by opening up the software, and I'm going to explain where um, the different sections that we're going to look at. If you'll go over to the uh, upper left-hand corner, there's Package Setup, Create Project, Import Images, Continue Project, and then there's a Contact Us button that allows you to see a phone number in case you need to give us a quick call for anything. But one thing I want you to do is if you look in the very upper left-hand corner, you'll see Easy Sports 1.5. That is the version. Um, Easy Sports, like Easy Suite, when you uh, initially open it up, it will actually go, if you're connected to the Internet, it will actually ping our servers and look for updates, and it's an automatic update. Um, like anything else, uh, we highly recommend you do do those updates because they're typically product changes, product updates, uh, new products being added, and in some cases there are some bug fixes in there that uh, are being taken care of. But our most current version now is 1.5, and under the preferences section up here, if you select your Easy Sports preferences, you'll see that there, it brings up applica application preferences, and there's a new option here now called Use Package History Functionality. Um, that is in version 1.5. I'm going to go ahead and select that and check it and say OK. And when we get back into um, working through a project, you'll see where this package history functionality comes into play. So that's one thing I want you to be sure and look for is your Easy Sports preferences and check your use package history functionality. Uh, it has to do with reordering from, a, uh, from projects itself. So anyway. That's one of our newer updates. So let's go ahead and we'll talk about the package setup itself. So we'll click on that and it brings up the package setup where you select to create a new, a brand new package set uh, or you can copy one. But I'm going to click on create new and the package group name, you can name these whatever you want. It's whatever works for you. I'm just going to call this web demo. And like I said, we can create a new package group or we can copy an existing package group uh, if it's a rather involved package set and we just want to copy it and then go in and modify some of the, the details in it. That makes your job a little bit easier. But in this case, we're just going to say Create New. Click OK. And it brings up our package setup window. Now, the very first thing you see here is this floating little, kind of like almost like a 4 by 5 dialog. And this is where it defaults to the very first letter in the alphabet. You can start anywhere you want to, okay? But we're just going to stay at A. And then you can give it a package name. And it doesn't matter, you know, what you call it. It's You can call it whatever's on your flyer. You can call it package A. I'm just going to call it touchdown. And package price, that's where you put in the price of the package that your customer is paying. And let's just say it's $25. And you want to put this in here so that you can print out reports from within Easy Sports after you've placed an order. So you can see uh, how many package A's you sold, how much money you made off a of package A, and then a total for the entire job itself, too. Um, you can put in if it's a commission and what percentage, and it'll figure out that for you. And then you can also put in your lab costs, you know, based upon a per unit price. Uh, so you can uh, figure out what your actual lab costs are on this job and what your actual profit is. For the purpose of the demonstration, I'm just going to leave it at that. So I click Save. So I've created Package A. Now what I need to do is add the products or the content for Package A. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll notice it says Catalog. That's the catalog of products that you can add to any one of the given packages. And you'll notice we have different categories. There's a print category bag tags, banners, there's buttons, calendars, okay, magazine covers, magnets, memory mates. For instance, if I open up the memory mate category, I've got uh, four different sizes of memory mates I can select from. If I go down and click on the 8x10 memory mate, it brings up the memory mate category showing me the different themes that I can select based upon what sport or event I'm photographing, okay? Cancel out of that. And then we close that memory mate category. You can go into panoramas. 
and it gives you all the different panorama options that you have, laminated, unlaminated. Uh, scroll down a little bit further, statuettes, stickers, trading cards. So all of these product categories are listed with the different themes within those product categories. But let's go ahead and open up the prints category. And first point of explanation I want to get through, be sure everybody understands, is you see listed in here, these are all your single print sizes like a 10 by 13, a 12 by 18, 16 by 20, two 4 by 5s, two 5 by 7s. Okay, you've got units that are multi print units and half units. But what I want you to look at is when you scroll down in five, your five, find the five by seven. You'll see there's a five by seven, then there's a five by seven team image. If you go to eight by ten, there is an eight by ten plus an eight by ten team image. With our Easy Sports software, we have something that's called group association, which is what we'll do when we import the images in. But in order for you to be able to get Johnny's team image with Johnny's package, then that package for the team image has to be selected from the 5x7 team image. Okay, the 5x7 print is for the individual. The 5x7 team image is for Johnny's specific team. Same thing with your 8x10. The 8x10 is for the individual, for his or hers individual prints. The 8x10 is going to be from the team image that Johnny or Jenny is associated to. And you can set up your packages however you want. You can include a team image in a package, or you can have a separate package, like an add-on, that is a team image. Now, a lot of people have both. Okay, But it's as simple as, let's just add a 5x7 by, by clicking on it. You'll see you have a 5x7 appear over in the products area now. Okay, If you need to change the quantity of 5x7s, that's where you would do that. Here's where you make the selection as far as if you want it printed on eSurface or Perl. Okay, you can also select to have this particular package printed in black and white if you wish. Okay, we're just going to leave that at color. Then to explain the overlay options, so I can add an overlay to this specific print within this specific package by clicking on Add Overlay. So our options are Studio Logo, which you have to have on file with us here, will be added to this print in the lower right-hand corner. Okay, we can do a personalized overlay where we can select one of these two text lines or both of them to be mapped to a specific name, maybe team name. And then we could go for full name. And that way, each person that orders this 5x7 is going to have the team name and full name printed on it specific to that individual. We can select to have it in a whatever color font that you want, and then also add a drop shadow to it, and then select the actual logo style, or what might be better known as the font that's used for the logo. Okay? So I'm going to go, and then the other option is, if I want to do a studio logo plus an over, or personalized overlay, you check that, okay? And it's only going to allow you to put the, the uh, personalized overlay in the center because the studio logo always goes in the lower right-hand corner, whereas on the personalized overlay, we can select to have it either way. Okay? So that's how that works. But building a package is as simple as adding the products. Okay? So we'll just say a 5 by 7 We'll add eight wallets. Oops, I double-clicked. I added too many. So we just click on the X to actually delete that. And if I wanted to now, let's just say we were going to add a team border. Click on your border category, and I want to add a 5x7 team border. Okay. So I come in here, and I can pick the one specific to the sport. Let's say it's baseball. And... Now you notice that there are text lines that I can that you can add. So if I want to have the team name appear on this particular team border, the drop down field to the right here, if I click on that, and you can scroll through here to find stuff, but the fastest way to do it is actually click on the drop down. If I want the team name, I'm just going to tap on the T key on my keyboard and it brings up team name. If I keep tapping on it, it just runs me through alphabetically. Uh, everything that has it starts with the letter T. So I'm going to leave that a team name, and you'll notice that appears underneath uh, in the text line area. So the team name will be pulled specific from the project. 
Okay, so hit save, and I've created my first package. To move on to the next package, just click on the create new package down below. Okay, and this is package B, and we'll just call this home run. And package price of, let's just say $20, doesn't really matter. Hit save. Now I can start building my package B, and I can add an 8x10 of the, the individual. Then I can add an 8x10 of the team. And when you do these 8x10 images or 5x7 team images, it's actually a template. And it's a template that has some available text lines. So you'll see you'll have three text lines or text fields to use across the top. Then you also have these text lines that are available down below here. The purpose of those at the bottom are if you want to include the names of all the individuals in the photograph. Those are going to be a smaller font size, but you can do that too. If I choose not to select anything here whatsoever, nothing will appear there. There won't be blank spaces. It just won't be used, and it will just appear as a straightforward 8x10 print. Okay, and it, that same, those same rules apply to any of our other templates. If you use a text line, you, it, it gets populated with the information for that individual. If you choose not to, then it just, nothing appears there but the graphic as though there were nothing there. All right? So in this case, since I'm not going to map any text, I just click save, and we're going to get an 8x10 of the individual and an 8x10 of the team image that that individual is associated to, plus eight wallets, okay? So it's, it's pretty straightforward as far as building the contents for your different package sets. Um, the only thing about doing that, I guess, is it's probably rather involved. It takes a little bit of time uh, because you want to be sure you get it right. Um, now, I want to go into a little bit more detail on the data mapping to be sure everybody understands that because in some cases it can be a little, there are so many variations and so much flexibility to our template line that in some cases uh, that can make it a little bit more difficult to understand. So one of the more adventuresome type of products you can offer is a trader card because there are so many text lines available. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the trading card category. And we're going to look at, we'll just say we're going to work with the baseball black. Okay, so if we look at this thumbnail image on the right-hand side, we have text line 1, 2, 3, and 4 available on the front. And on the back side of this trader card, there's lines 5 through 11. And again, keep in mind, if I were to choose not to use 6 through 10, the only thing that's going to appear there is the graphic itself. All right. So what you can do, and, and how you use the text fields is totally up to you. There's no set um, um, a sequence that you have to set. I mean, it's however you want to set it up. So for example, if I were going to use line one on the front of the card, I'm going to use that for team name. So I'm going to come over and click on my drop down next to line one, and you'll notice I have a maximum of 32 characters. Click that drop down, tap the T key, team name comes in, then just click, and now I've selected team name. And the way that I know I have mapped this from the subject data fields is team name has the lesser than and greater than symbols on either side of the, the name there. Okay? So line two, I'm going to map that to full name. So click the drop down and hit the F key, and full name comes up. Okay, line three, I'm going to map that to position. So click the drop down on line three, tap the F key, first period, photographer, position. Okay, line four, I'm going to do the year, so drop down, click the drop down, and hit year. Okay, scroll down so I can see the other fields that are available. Line five is on the back. Line five, I'm going to use the team name again. So hit the drop down. So you can use these text fields um, in multiple, the same text fields in multiple uh, multiple areas on a product. So team name is going to be five. Now, what I want to do on line six is I want to have the uh, athlete's age. Okay. So if I come over here and click the drop down, tap the A key, address comes up, address two, then age. If I do that, then what will appear on this card? 
is just the kid's age. Let's say the kid's, uh, the athlete's uh, 10 years old. If in the project I just type in a 10, that's all that's going to appear. It won't say age, so keep that in mind. Just because you select the age field, that isn't what it's going to say. Um, we designed it that way, again, to give you maximum flexibility so that if we have a fixed age field on any product and it says age and you decide not to put anything in there, then the card itself will look like, look like it's incomplete. Okay, so we give you the ability to kind of work that either way you want. All right, so if I want to use this in a little different way, what I can do is come over here. I'm going to swipe over that and delete that. I'm going to actually type in the word age and then add a colon. All right, now you notice there's no greater than or lesser than symbol. All right, then I'm going to hit a space and then put age. All right, so what will appear on the card, I won't have to type it in. Um, under each person's individual name. There will be an automatic age on there for me. And then I'll be prompted to type in the age for that person. Okay? So line 7, we're going to do that height, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to type HT, add a space, and then come over here, click my drop down, tap my H key, and that way I will have the abbreviation for height. And then if I put their height value in, It'll be in there specifically for them, okay? So same thing on line eight. I want to map that to coach. So if you just don't put anything in there and the coach's name is Jones, then what will appear on line nine is just the word Jones. So what you do is just type in coach space drop down, and there's coach right there, okay? Line nine. We're going to uh, map that to league. Okay, line 10. We're going to map that to photographer because I want my studio's name on there. And then line 11, I'm going to go ahead and I can use full name. Okay, but I also want to show you how you can use first and last name if that's what you want to use. So again, I'm going to swipe over this to delete that. And I'm going to tap my F key to bring in the first name, come over here and add a space so that there's a space in between the first and the last name. Click my drop down, find last name, and map it to first and last name. Now the reason you might want to go either way is I think probably more often for sports most people will use full name because that works just fine when it comes to sorting things. Um, when you're working within a team, um, it's just there's not that many kids. When it comes to school photography, more school photographers will use first and last name because it gives them the ability to sort by last name when it comes to some of these large volumes of images uh, specific to a teacher or to a grade. Um, so if you like to be able to sort by team name and last name, then you need to use first name, last name. Okay, but I think what most people are doing in sports nowadays is they're doing team name and then just full name. Okay, so now that we've done all that, we can click Save. Now, the other thing, too, is once you've set something up, if you want to be able to go back in and verify how you've, what we refer to, map the data, which is what we just did, just come back to that specific package, which is package B, come over here and click on the template overlay name, and it brings up your template that you've added that's part of it and you can see how you've mapped things line one is team name full name position year team name and so on so I can verify that I've done it correctly all right and just hit cancel there's nothing to save there so that is basically how you can go in and create uh, some different packages once you've created your packages you can go into your package setup Okay, so here's all the different packages, and I can come in here and click on one of these to open it up to take a look at it again. I get a warning that this will not change the package contents of any existing projects that are already created with this. Click OK. So here is my package setup. Okay, I can click on the different packages, and if I want to go in and see how I've mapped the lightning blue, I can see that I've mapped line one, 
to first name, team name to, and so on. So I can verify that I've done things correctly. And first few times that you do this, because there are so many variables involved, it's not a bad idea to go back in and see how you've set these things up. You can also print your package summary by hitting this button here so you can see in a printed form what the contents are. It doesn't show you how you've mapped the data, but at least you can see that package A has all the correct contents. Okay, to get out of this package group, just click on the main button down below. So that's the basic structure of creating the different package sets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here, and I am going to go ahead and unmute everybody. And if anyone has any questions on the package setup, go ahead and I'll try and answer those before we move on. Is everybody good on that? Yep. Okay. I'll take that as a yes. Was that a question? Are you okay? Right. I'm okay. Cool. All right. So we will go back to sharing the desktop. So the next area we're going to get into as soon as this comes around is we're going to go ahead and create a project. So how you photograph your, your sports is totally up to you as far as um, how you keep track of names, if you drop them all into one folder, um, you know, how you slate, that sort of thing. The only thing you have to do is obviously is you've got to keep um, everything in some kind of sequence so you know that uh, which kids are which kids. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click on Create Project, and it brings up the Create Project dialog. And this is basically we're like doing a pre-flight for how we're going to order from this particular project. Uh, we'll give the project a name, and that's a name that, you know, whatever makes sense for you. We we'll just call this YMCA. And be sure underneath there, this is where you're going to select the package group to use for this particular uh, project. So be sure you select the correct one. I'm going to use my Spring Sports. Capture type is digital. And anything that has an asterisk next to it is, is something you absolutely have to select. So we need to select it. This is Sports. And Color Correction, Deluxe Standard and Economy. Deluxe is we're going to color correct each single individual image. Uh, standard is we're going to do a batch color correction. And economy is we're going to do, uh, we're not going to do any color correction or density corrections. We're just going to print. Okay, and there is a, um, a price difference between all of those different products. And I don't know if I have all that. I do have that in front of me. So just so everybody is on the same page. Uh, let's see here. For a full unit, deluxe is a dollar forty-eight. For a full unit standard, it's a dollar fourteen, and for a full unit economy, it's ninety-five cents. So keep that in mind. That's your print pricing. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and select standard. Then directly underneath there is our print packaging. And scroll down, you have ready to deliver. That's what the RTD stands for, envelopes, open or closed. You can either select sports envelopes or portrait, uh, or ready to deliver poly bags. Uh, rigid mailers, if you want those, uh, you can get them ready to deliver or, or in bulk. Or if you want this job delivered in bulk, you would just select bulk. And you can also get bulk prints with envelopes, sports specific or portrait, or bulk with just the poly bags. All right? Uh, on the right-hand side over here are your package insert options. We can select uh, to use a confirmation card, uh, the straight standard one, or the confirmation card with the safety ID. Uh, we can package with reorder materials. Uh, if that's the case, then we have to have your reorder materials uh, here in production so that we can do that. And then the label options, ready to deliver label. Uh, that's if you select that then we'll get you a, a label on each one of the packages that will have the kid's first and last name, uh, their team name, um, and what the actual package is that they've ordered. Uh, that helps you know, in identifying who, what everything or who belongs to that particular package. Keep in mind on packaging, it's 30 cents an envelope. Plus, if you want to do the uh, ready-to-deliver label, those are a nickel apiece. On the confirmation cards, the package inserts, those are $0.19 cents a piece. 
nice thing about those package confirmation cards is it gives you the ability to add some marketing information to them too. So a lot of people will use those also. Okay, now underneath the print packaging is the package sort order. This is where you can set how you want to have the packages delivered back to you. Again, in most cases, most people are selecting team name and then full name. And what we'll do is then we'll take each team and band it together, and then they'll be arranged alphabetically by full name within that team name. That way it's real easy just to hand a set of packages off to each team, coach, uh, team mom, whatever that may be. Uh, this is where you would select sheet cut wallets, and then shipping default is back to the studio. You can upgrade to air because uh, this does go out ground on volume work, and then ship order to end customer. Uh, if you select that, then it brings up a dialog for you to add that address in. We can ship the entire order to an end customer, not individual packages to individual people. Okay, so I've set up my project. And at this point in time, I'm ready to go ahead and import the images into the project. So I'll click on Import Images. This is the Import dialog. Okay. At the top here, it says Project Name. And this is where I need to browse for where my images are. Okay. Or if I have a uh, just a camera card connected to a card reader, I can click on uh, Find Cameras Now and, and import directly from that camera card. We've tried to set it up so there's, you know, whatever fits your workflow, there are different ways to do it. This area down here shows you where the image save directory is, and by default, it's on your C drive. Um, you can, in your preferences up here on the main screen, set up a separate image save location on a different drive if you like, so it doesn't fill up your C drive. Um, and by the way, I, mean, I am working in the Windows environment, um, and this, this application works on a Mac also, and it's exactly the same interface and same look. Okay. Then this image backup directory. This is if in your workflow while you're importing images into the project, if you would like to create a secondary copy somewhere out on the network just as a backup, um, if, if that's part of your workflow, you can have that happen at the same time during the import. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and browse for the images, and I think they're on my desktop. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just import in a folder of images that has a variety of teams in it. Okay, so I'll click open. The other thing to keep in mind, this import dialog window, we're going to import a folder of images. I cannot go into the folder of images and select the ones I want to import in. I can do that after I'm in the project, but at this point, it's only a folder of images. So once I've selected that, I'm going to click on the Import Now. And basically, based upon the size of the job, the number of images, your import can take a long period of time or just a short one because it's copying the images and putting them into some project folders. Um, that way, it's easier to keep them in one location and things don't get disconnected because typically there's quite a few more images in a sports job, a dance job, whatever, as compared to some of the, uh, the things you might be doing in Easy Suite. Once the uh, import is done, the progress bar will have gone clear across, tells us it's finished. Now we can go ahead and go to Project. All right, so this is where we start building the team structure for group association. So it starts off, it wants you to add a team. All right, now I can also, if there are no, if this is just a simple order from a couple of individuals that I'm going to order some 8x10s from or whatever, I can click on the button and say no team, and then just order from individuals. But this is a team project, so the very first team, I'm just going to call it baseball, and click save. So you notice now it's starting to build this team structure on the left. All right, and if we look at this, the the large icon with all the heads on it, that's where I'm going to drag the team image onto. Then the little film strip on the right-hand side is where I'm going to drop the individuals to do my group association, kind of like just building a folder structure. So click on the team, drag it over, and drop it on top of that large icon. That becomes the team image for baseball. Then I'm going to go ahead and select the range of images that are for the individuals and just drag them onto the side. Okay, so now that is everybody in baseball. So my next team is soccer. 
So just go up and click Add and type in your name. Okay, take my soccer team, drag it over. Okay, select a range of images of the individuals, drop them on the side. The next one is going to be my track team. And again, I'm just using the name of the sport here. You can call it varsity track. You can call it uh, Grandview High School track. It's whatever, you know, whatever fits. All right, hit save. Drag the team image over. Okay. Select a range of images. And on the side there. So now when I click on each one of these, I can see what images are associated to that team. Okay. And keep in mind, I'm in the organize screen. All right, it says right up here in the upper left-hand corner, this is where I'm organizing my teams. I can click this drop-down and do the same thing to scroll through and see what's all associated. Okay. Um, I can add a single image by clicking here. Don't need to. I can delete images by clicking on selecting the image and deleting it. Okay. Double-click on the image, brings it into a compare screen. If I need to see the high res, I can click on that and zoom in on it. Be sure eyes are open. Everything looks good. Lower right hand corner, go back to the organized screen. Okay? If you need to, if you import your images in without any you know, without them having been pre rotated, you can rotate here. Um, if I've made a mistake and this person doesn't belong in the track team, I can come up here and drag it onto ungrouped and come back here. It's in the ungroup view. And if I want to put it with the baseball team, oops, that was a mistake. Same thing here. I can drag this and bring it right back to track. So there's a lot of different ways you can move these things around while you're getting things organized. Okay. Now that everything's organized, you'll notice in the lower right-hand corner now, there is a team button available. So I've taken care of the individuals or the organization of it, now I have my next team. So when I click on next team, shows me the team image, okay, right up here at the top. All right, now this area here, this is for where you're going to put your package selections that you want to give to the coaches, maybe sponsors, maybe team moms, that sort of thing, because there's not going to be a picture of them to associate a team image to. So these will all be packaged separately in one envelope, and there's a little box to the right of that so we can click on that to view the available packages that are part of this package set and I want to do an 8 by 10 group I can either just hit OK and come back in and type in a 3 or if I double click on it, it puts a 3 there and if I want 3 8 by 10 group images I put 3 in there 3 times you don't have to put 2-3 or 3-2 or whatever or 3-3 three, three. Um, just put in the package letter or number as many times as however many packages you need. All right. Now remember, we talked about the package history and being able to do that for reorders. That adds this extra di extra dialogue here, this extra box. And when we get through this project, we'll come back and look at that. All right. So I've entered three packages or three eight by ten team images that will be packaged separately. Then what we need to do now is we need to add what we call team level data, which is down here. All right. So I've already put my baseball team name in, and if I want to modify and change that, um, the abbreviation for the school is SCA. So I can change that to SCA Baseball. What you put in here, if you map something to team name, is what you're going to have appear on those actual templates. So be sure the spelling's right and the capitalization is correct. Okay, so school name, SCA, okay, coach, or just say Smith, and the year is 2011, okay. Um, again, this is what's referred to as your team level data, and based upon the package set and what text fields I've decided to use and map is what I'm going to see here. So if I'm just ordering straight prints, with no text fields used whatsoever, I won't see any text fields here other than just team name. Okay, so now it's going to walk us through to go to the next team. Same thing here. I know my package three is an 8 by 10 group, so I'll just add one. Uh, school name, 
and coach and then year. Okay? So go to my next team. And again, be sure if you don't fill something out here, nothing's going to appear at, in that team level data. So be sure you pay attention to the fields that need to be uh, filled out. Okay. All right. So now I've been through all three teams. Now I'm ready to go to the individual screen. Okay, one other thing I want to show you on this screen itself, if for some reason I'm unsure of my package set and I want to check it while I'm working on this actual project, lower left-hand corner there's a little button down here where you can view or edit the package group. So I just want to view it, click on it so I can see. Okay, what was that package 3 again? Come down here and select package 3. It's an 8 by 10 border group. Click on it and see how it's been mapped. It's been mapped to team name. Okay. Now to get back out of this lower right hand corner, click on team, takes me back to the team. Okay. So all my team information is taken care of. I can go on to the individual screen. All right. So here we are on the individual screen of the very first team, which is baseball. Okay. Um, I've got all these variable, all these different fields to fill out, and these fields again are based upon which fields and text lines I've selected on all the different products that, you know, the, t the different templates that are going to be part of this, this order. So let's do this real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate, you know, how some of this stuff works. So I'm going to enter a package A for the very first person. And you'll notice when I entered it, none of the other fields underneath it have become highlighted. If I come over here and enter a package B on this one, you'll notice that I've got a couple of fields that have become highlighted. And the reason they have is if I take my cursor and hover over this, it tells me that the first name is required by one of the products in package B. And it tells me that sport type is required by one of the products in package B. So it's prompting me to add the necessary data that's going to be used for a package B. And the very first one that has a package A, there, is, there aren't any templates in there. There's no data mapping on anything, so I don't have to add anything. So that way I can work through this a little bit more efficiently. So first name, we'll just put in Jim, and sport type is going to be baseball. Okay, go to my next one, and I'm going to add a G. And there's nothing extra needed for that particular one. If I come in and I, if I add an additional package, which is... Um, we'll do an E. Okay. There's no additional ones there either. But if I add the B in, then it for for that particular package, there's that first name um, and sport type information that's needed for it. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and add that in. And I'm going to leave one of these fields blank just to demonstrate what happens. When I'm ready to go to next team, I'll get a little warning that pops up that says there are blank fields that are needed by products ordered. These fields have been marked with a red border. Press OK to proceed and have these products text be blank or cancel to fill them in. So you can move past that if you don't if you can't get the information, but um, it also allows you to cancel out, catch a mistake, and fix it. Okay? Next team, same thing. It's just basically walking through, adding the different um, packages that are necessary. And I'm going to go ahead because we need to also show our crop screen so we can see some of the stuff that's going on. So let me add a name there. And sport type is soccer. And we'll come over here and we'll do a G and an A. And as far as capitalizing it in your package field, doesn't matter. It's whatever works. Next team. Okay. We'll do an A, B, and C. And real creative with our names here. And sport type is track. And we'll do a three. E and a G. Okay? So now that we've been through all three teams, you'll notice in the lower right-hand corner now, we're ready to go on to the cropping. So when I click on the crop tool, it brings up all of the individuals in a vertical orientation first. Okay, 
So if you'll notice here, when I click on one of these images, these images that I've imported in are camera aspect ratio images. So I have not pre-cropped them uh, or anything, to an 8x10 or 4x5 or 5x7 or whatever. All right, so when I click on it, you'll see it's highlighted by kind of an orangish yellow box. And if you look up here at the top, that's the 5x7 crop for that image. And then the dotted line inside there is an 8x10 crop. So it shows you how the two different crops will work on this particular image. So I can right click and zoom in on one of these images, magnify it to about that, and left click to reposition. And go ahead and I can do these all just one at a time. Or what I can do is I can come in here and crop one and apply that crop value forward to maybe make this a little bit more efficient. Okay, so it worked pretty good on this image. When it comes to sports, sports you probably a little bit more difficult to shoot consistent. Okay, so I can come in and zoom out on this one here and apply that value forward, and it will not affect the previous images. And again, come in and kind of fix some of these things, get them where they all look pretty good. So the more consistent you shoot, Obviously, the less time you'll spend here, but at least you have the ability to get it how you want. So you'll also notice I'm looking at the 5x7 vertical crop. So you can see these are all the different products that I need to crop for. But the application itself will prompt me to go to the next crop, which is now my horizontal 5x7 images of the teams. So same thing. Right-click and zoom in. And we'll... We'll apply that forward and see how that fits for the other teams. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, keeping in mind where the 8x10 and the 5x7 is, that might be a little tight on the track team, but we'll set it right to there. Okay, now go ahead and click on Next Crop. Now what it's showing us is the 8x10 border of the team images. Okay, so I've got three from the baseball team. And what I can do is I can right-click and zoom in on this image and adjust it like that, okay? And then I can apply that forward, and what it's going to do is apply that crop value to all the images, including the girls' soccer and that last track team, all right? But, and if I do that, okay, let me go ahead and crop it. You'll see crop forward, say okay. So it cropped everything. Another feature that we've added that will help in this is rather than crop forward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and click on the the uh, girls soccer team, hold down my shift key and click on the last girls soccer team image. And you'll notice they're all highlighted. Come back in and now I can do like a batch crop of just this team alone, okay, and not affect anything else. So I'm going to kind of zoom out just a little. Reposition. Be sure that they're all highlighted and selected in order for this to work. Okay? And I like that. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, scroll down to my next team. And see this one here? I didn't, I, I missed, by mistake, I didn't grab that one. Come down and grab my track team. And we're going to zoom out a little bit on it. Reposition. And that looks pretty good. So there's two ways to crop here. You can, or actually three. You can do them one at a time. You can do a batch crop of applying a crop to an individual, to a, a certain image, and applying that to all the other images that follow it. Or you can select a range of images and just kind of move them and crop them all at one time. All right. So now we're done with that. We've got our next crop button. Now in the memory mates, this is where you see the individual and the team image, if I click on one of these individuals and zoom in on it, and let's just say we want to come in a little bit closer on this, and then apply that forward, it's going to apply that crop forward of just the individual images. Okay? Again, I can come in and fix some of these. And then the team image, I can do the same way I wanted to do on the other one, where I'm just going to select these two team images. Let me be sure I get these selected properly and just crop just those two, reposition how I want it, maybe come in a little bit more, just like that. Okay, that looks pretty good, and just this one, we'll crop it about like that. All right, next crop, here are the five by seven borders, okay? So come in and crop 
just that one, just this one, and select these two, and crop those, magnify them the same together, move them over a little bit, up, looks good. Okay, now you'll notice that down the lower right-hand corner, I've got a button that's become active to place the order, because I've gone through everything I'm supposed to. I've created the project, I've imported images into it, I've organized them, I've added data at the team level, I've added data at the individual level, I've cropped all the images. Be sure you go through everything here. Okay, now I'm ready to order. Order complete. I can either go back to the main menu or go back in the cropping if maybe I forgot something. I'm going to just confirm that the order is all correct. Okay, and this is that first screen that came up when we created the order. That way, if maybe I forgot to select something here, I can change it or update it at this point. Everything looks good, so I'm going to confirm. Now this walks us through the process of finalizing the order all the way to uploading the order. So my options are I can upload it, or I can create an order file that allows me to burn it to a CD or DVD if I need to mail that in or send that in separately. I'm going to leave it at the upload. Click the next button. There's the account number, studio name. I'll need to put in an order number, and that order number can be whatever you want. Uh, select if it's a rush or not, 50 or 100 percent. The order description, color correction, capture type, the uh, event name, which is, um, the, or pardon me, the type of sport or the the type of project, sport, uh, school, event, that sort of thing. Um, if it's a reorder or if it's a remake, I would check one of these, but in this case, this is just our first time order. Click the next arrow. If you get a coupon code for a new product, uh, you see probably more of this in Easy Suite than you do Easy Sports. This is where you would enter the coupon code to get the discount. Um, we're going to go past that without adding anything in. This is where it actually creates the order file. It zips all the images up and all the data. Okay, I can choose to upload this order now, or I can save it for later. I can also print a run sheet from it. And I'm going to go ahead and select now, or just leave it at that. If I click over, then it actually brings up the FTS upload, and it's starting to upload that order directly to the lab. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that so it doesn't come through. And I, obviously, I just want to cancel that. So I've canceled out of that. The orders, The job has been uploaded to the lab. Um, if you get the job in, I believe it's before before noon. Um, it'll be done on that day's business, or it might be 10 o'clock. Don't hold me to that. Um, now, the, the next thing that may, you may may come into play is you need to re, is you need to place a reorder for, from that particular project. To get back into that project, you click on Continue Project. I've already set up and selected to allow me to be able to uh, use the package history functionality. And this is a new button that you'll see now. Okay, The problem we were running into, or the issue was, if somebody wanted to place a reorder and this was not available, then you'd have to go back into the individual screen here and remove all these package definitions and only put a package in the package field of the individuals you wanted to reorder from, and it was real time consuming. So we've added this button here for reorder. So I want to create a reorder from the YMCA project. So I click on the reorder button, and I get a little dialog that says creating a reorder will move package information to package history. Do you wish to continue? I'm going to say okay. It takes me to my team screen. Now you'll notice, see this package history now? What was in the actual package field over here has been moved over here, so I can keep track and know what has been ordered from a particular job previously. And you also see there's a little tiny lock down here in the lower left-hand corner. And that lock is there because I cannot delete that package history. We don't want that to happen by accident. But you see, I can go through the teams. I don't want to order anything from them. don't want to order anything from these individuals. Their package history is down below here. Okay, But I just want to order from this person and this person here. And I can create a reorder very easily now just from those individuals. Okay. So let me go back here to menu. And the nice thing about this continue project option here is when you click on that, you can go to any stage, any part of the actual project 
sequencing or, or a creation. So I can go right back to my organized screen if I needed to and be sure that I have things correct on this screen. Okay, go back to main and continue project and go right back to the individual screen. So it's an easy, fast way to kind of bounce back and forth um, inside of the, the different projects themselves. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is go back to stop sharing and I'm going to unmute all and we basically have walked through the entire project creation all the way through creating an order and sending it off to the lab covered the new the new option in there that's the reorder feature is there any questions on uh, there's a couple other things I want to show y'all is there any questions on what we've covered so far okay seems pretty Thank straightforward you. Thank you. Okay, so let me go back and mute all and share my desktop. One of the things that we've, um, there's been a little bit of confusion on lately is we've made some modifications to how the package label uh, information works and, and how you're prompted for names and all that good stuff. So if we go into a project here, and I've created a project that's called first name, last name, demo, and I'm going to right click on it, I can either delete this project or I can edit it. I'm going to go back to edit. On this screen here, okay, we have the option to select ready to deliver labels. Now, the way the ready to deliver labels work is it's based upon first and last name or full name. So our thought process is, is if you're going to ask for ready to deliver labels, why would you want to do that if you don't have names in your project? Um, if you have incomplete data, then you can't get that information on those labels. So having said that, the requirement for ready to deliver labels is everybody in the project has to have either first name, last name, or full name information in their data fields underneath their individual images. Okay, if it doesn't, it won't let you move on. Okay, so with that selected, okay, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. I'm going to go ahead and go into this actual project. Okay, so we'll go to the organize screen and team. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and we're going to look at the actual package set that's associated to it. My package A is just an 8x10. Okay, my package B is a memory mate. And the memory mate, the data fields on it are mapped, line one, full name, line two, team name, line three, league. Okay, pretty standard. Okay, now I'm doing a button over here on my package C. And that package C on my button, I've mapped line one to full name, oh, pardon me, first name and last name. Okay, so it's going to, uh, I'll be prompted to type in the first name and the last name. Okay, um, guys, I'm going to have to sign off right now because there's a tornado warning and I'm being told to go to the basement. Um, we'll pick this up another time. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Sorry about that, guys, but I just was, I'm, I've been told I have to end this meeting. Thank you.